that will I do. You, you realize no qualifications there other than asking his name. You get that? Now, see, when we read that, most people automatically put a qualifier in there. Well, not, yeah, but not this or not that. And that. Okay. But, and then it says that the father may be glorified in the son. So what does that mean? Now, remember, go back to John. You don't have to go there, but remember John eleven twenty two. Right now, whatever you ask of God, God will give it you. Do you realize Jesus just said the same thing about you that Mary said about him? And this is in the Gospels. She didn't even have a clue, right, that the new birth was going to come and that there was going to be a recreation and that recreation was going to be your spirit being recreated into the exact likeness and image of Jesus himself. That's why you can ask in his name and it will be done for you. That's why he said, I will do it. Why? Because we're blood brothers. We're in this together. We are identical twins in the spirit. Amen? Do you get that? That's how God sees you. He looks at you in the, by the spirit, in the spirit of his son, and says, okay, we are connected. And now whatever you ask, he will do it. Think about that. Like I said, if we really believe that, we spend a whole lot more time asking. Amen? Yeah. All right, let's keep going. He says in verse 14, and this is just in case, uh, he probably knew that most people wouldn't believe it. So he has to repeat himself. He says in verse 14, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You realize he just repeated himself twice. He had to say it twice. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, now I want you to listen, read these words and believe these words. Don't read the words through the eyeglasses of religious doctrine right, of what maybe you've been indoctrinated to believe in times past. Read what it actually says, right? And the, one of the best ways to find out what things, what the Bible says is to look at it and say, what is it not saying? What's the opposite of that, okay? So he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and shall be in you. Why did he say that? Because this is before the day of Pentecost. Isn't that right? He's with you and shall be in you. Even the spirit of truth. Well, let me go on down to verse 18. I will not. Well, yeah. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. Now look at verse 20, at that day. So obviously he was talking about a day in the future. Is that right? At that day, you shall know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Man, you see that? We're one with him because of Jesus. Amen? Now watch. <clears throat> he that hath my commandments and keeps them. That means do, does them, right? He it is that loves me. So up here he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So he said, if you have my commandments and you keep them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father. Now notice he's making a distinction. He said, if you love, he said, Jesus said, if you love me and keep my commandments, my father will love you. Now understand, we know that God is love. But here, it even goes on. And notice, a lot of people say, well, if God's a loving God, why does he send people to hell? He doesn't. He made, that hell was not made for, for Christians. It wasn't made for people. Amen? It was made for the devil and his angels. Man goes there because he forces his way there because he does not get healed of death in his spirit. Does that make sense? He had, man is born with a terminal disease called death, called sin. God gave the antidote, Jesus. But if people will not receive Jesus, then they are doomed to go wherever their father is and their father is the devil. Jesus made it clear. He said, you are of your father, the devil. Notice he said that to religious people, people that knew the law. And he said, you're of your father, the devil. There are two families on this earth. One of the Father, one of God, and one of the devil. 
And, and it's not God's fault if you don't become his child. He's made the opportunity and said, anybody can come to me. But notice he said, if you come to me and you believe on me and you love me, then you're going to keep my commandments, which means if you're not keeping the commandments, you don't love him. And if you don't love God, then God can love you, but he cannot keep you from, well, he, you don't belong to him. Does this make sense? So he says here, and remember that, that term in verse 20, at that day, at that day. Now, he said, he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved to my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So how's he going to manifest? Well, he just said, ask anything in my name and he will do it. Now, go with me to John chapter 16, very quickly here. Oh yeah, very quickly. <laughs> John 16, verse 22. And you know, therefore, oh, I'm sorry. And you now, therefore, have sorrow but I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man takes from you. Now look at verse, look at verse 23. And in that day, that, there it is again, that day. Now notice this is two chapters later and he says it again. In that day, you shall ask me nothing. Now notice when he said that day, you have to realize that what day that was, because if he says that day, it meant it wasn't that day. It means in a future day. Isn't that right? And he says, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. A while ago, he said, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. Isn't that right? Yes. Now he says, you're going to ask me nothing. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. And notice, he said, right now you have to ask me because you don't have the relationship with the Father but, and, and that I have. And if I ask the Father anything, he'll do it. But in that day, when you believe on my name, in that at a future date, you're not going to ask me. You're going to go straight to the Father. Why? Because you're going to have the relationship with the Father that I do. Do you get that? In verse 24, he says, Hitherto, up till now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask. And you shall receive that your now notice notice why you're going to receive that your joy may be full. God answers prayer so you can have joy. Think about that. He answers your prayers so you can be joyful, which at the same time, him answering your prayers glorifies him through the sun. It's a win win situation. I mean, does this make sense? Yeah. Verse 25, these things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time is coming when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Look at verse 26, at that day, there it is again. So here it is three times now in two chapters. He says, in that day, in that day, in that day, over and over again. Is that right? At that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, do you get that? If you're asking my name, and I, I'm not telling you that you're going to ask in my name, and I'm going to go ask the Father. He said, you're going to ask in my name. Watch this. He says, and he said, for the Father himself loves you. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Now, I'm going to show you real quick. Let me get you over there real quick. In Acts. Acts chapter 2. You can turn there. You don't have to. Acts chapter 2. Whoop, let me get that back. Sorry about that. Go back. Ah. Well, if I can get there. There we go. Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Now, you know this is the day of Pentecost, right? But this, now notice, it says in uh, verse 15, For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that, this is that, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. So this is that in the last days. You get that? So whenever Jesus said in that day, he was talking about this day. He was talking about the day of Pentecost began a new day, and that new day is today. Do you get that? So when he said that day, he, he was talking about this day. Why? Because this is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen? 
This is the day. God is always now, like we talked about before. So now think about this. So when he said, in that day, you're not going to ask the Father. You're, you're not going you're, you're to ask me and I ask the Father. He said, you're going to ask the Father in my name because of me, in my stead. Now really, when you say in the name, it doesn't mean to say the name. You can say the name. It's great to say the name. But you don't have to say the name to get it done because he's saying, you're doing it in my name. Amen. And in my name means literally in my stead. In other words, you're going to ask for what I would be asking. But I'm not going to be there because I've got to go to the Father. And so you're going to ask in my stead because you're going to represent me. So do you get this? So because of this now, he said, this is that day when we are to pray in his name directly to the Father. What does that mean? That means there's no other mediator but Jesus. Sorry, Mary. You're a good woman. Highly blessed, highly favored, absolutely. But you're not a mediator. You understand that? 